Welcome back to the Prison Architect tutorial series here on the channel. I'm your host, longtime listener. Be sure to drop a like, hit the subscribe button, and comment below. In this episode, we're going to go over four rooms that often get kind of overlooked in terms of people thinking about the mechanics of how they work and that sort of thing. Uh, so we are going to cover storage and then deliveries, garbage, and exports. Now, we're going to start with storage, um, and basically, there are no room requirements for storage. So it can be inside, outside, doesn't matter how big it is. You, obviously, you don't need anything in the room because it's basically just an empty space. There's not a whole lot else to know about storage, honestly, other than that typically what's going to end up in there are items that get dismantled for one reason or another. Or, for example, let's say you start the process of building a bunch of rooms and then you realize, like, wait a minute, I don't need XYZ. And you tell them to stop installing XYZ. You've already ordered it. So there's a supply truck queued up to go ahead and deliver it. And they will send it to deliveries. Your worker will get it and take it to storage. So I like to keep storage on different ends of the complex so that if a worker is dismantling something way over here, they don't have to come all the way over here to drop it off and vice versa. Now, there are a few tips around storage that I will point out. It is a good idea to make them staff only. And it's also a good idea to try and keep it, you know, if you can, kind of away from inmates so that they just aren't able to get in there and look for contraband um, if they are disobeying you know the rules also not a terrible idea to have a metal detector um, but if you keep it staff only and do a good job keeping inmates out of there the metal detector is probably uh, overkill Next, deliveries. The only room requirement for deliveries is that it is a one by three layout. So that's really tiny, and most people generally have a, lar a little bit larger uh, deliveries space, but that's the only requirement. Any objects that are arriving by supply truck or even by like a prison bus or whatever, prisoner transport bus, they get dropped off in the deliveries area. So, um, if you don't have reception, prisoners will just hang out in deliveries until your guards go get them and take them to a cell. Um, so that's just a minor note. With prison labor, inmates can be tasked with getting items from the deliveries area, such as sheet metal for the workshop, uh, prison uniforms, like I think... Yeah, see, we've got prisoner uniforms. If I didn't have this as staff only, um, which I don't, so basically you want to make this area staff only. How do I do that? I guess maybe if you can have it indoors in a space that's like contained, you can make it staff only, but I guess anything outside that's not contained by a wall, what I could do here if I wanted to, just put a wall there and a wall there and basically enclose this space and have like a door access to the deliveries area and make it staff only so that prisoners will not go out there. Because if a prisoner comes out here, they can make a, an escape attempt because there's no like outer wall containing them at that point. They see freedom, they're going to make a run for it. Um, then... And I just kind of talked about some tips, one of them being enclose the space and make it staff only. Also, you could put a road gate. Um, generally speaking, road gate is a good idea. If you're going to have one, it's a good idea to have it pretty far south to avoid issues with uh, bottleneck around the garbage and deliveries area. So that's that. Um, you can also, from what I understand, designate drop-off areas through logistics but i'm not exactly sure how to do this but i read something about that that you can essentially say like if you had different delivery areas for example 
you could say in this delivery area i want just uh like inmates dropped off and then in this next deliveries area i want supplies and objects and such but i'm not sure how to do that i just read that it can be done so there's that another you know potentially good idea is to place a patrol like so with a dog handler that will help eliminate contraband that could come in right in that spot um because this is an area where a lot of contraband uh, originates. So that's a good idea. And then finally, you'll want to have garbage and exports south or below the deliveries zone. Because basically what you don't want to have happen is, um, you know, your supply trucks waiting for the garbage pickup. So... Like here, perfect example. I've got license plates down here. They've got to get this off, get this garbage, and then get moving. So it's a good idea to have garbage like a little bit south of where your delivery zone is. And then moving on to garbage, not a lot to know about it other than same room requirements as deliveries. It's got to be one by three. You'll want to have it south of deliveries. And then finally, if you have recycle bins placed around your facility um, you can make a little bit of incremental cash because of the fact that they pay you 10 bucks for each bag of recycling see we got three of them right there it's only 30 bucks but it's better than nothing and recycle bins don't cost you a whole lot finally exports it is a good idea to have exports somewhere relatively close to the road to give your drivers easy access to it. Um, the only room requirement is that it has to be one by three. I like to have exports, if I can, close to my workshop because that's where a lot of my exports are coming from. They made a bunch of license plates from the sheet metal that we had. They placed it in here. Driver comes, grabs it, loads it up onto the truck and hauls it off and I get paid cash money. Another good idea is to make it staff only, um, especially if it is outdoors and near like the exit of the facility. That way workers are going to be the ones that are moving stuff in and out of there. So that is an idea that can help with the prison escapes. Um, you can sell lumber like trees and logs even if you don't have like a workshop cranking out legitimate exports it is a good idea to place this you know create this room early in a playthrough because as you are building your facility your workers are going to have to cut down trees to make you know to clear the land when they do they'll move those logs to exports and you can make pretty good money uh, simply by just hacking down all the trees uh, early in a playthrough. In fact, one idea that I've seen somebody execute, before you could just go ahead and say, like, give me 500 grand right out of the gates, you could start with a jungle landscape and then just have your workers cut down every single tree on the map before you start building anything. It takes a while. You just basically assign them with the task of cutting down all those trees, go away for the night the next morning you come back those trees are gone and you've got like four hundred thousand dollars and haven't even started building anything yet so that's that and that is it for this tutorial we've covered storage deliveries exports and garbage i forgot to point out the, uh, the one other thing with exports is that you'll if you do have it outside here by the uh the road Make sure, again, that you have it south of deliveries so that your drivers are going to drop off deliveries, keep going south, and do these other two items instead of vice versa. And that is all we've got to say about these four topics. So if you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, comment below, and we will see you all next time.